the world's first quad <laughs> camera phone in the world, aka the Samsung Galaxy A9 2018. This is a completely different phone from the original Samsung Galaxy A9, which was the battery-centric phone that was released back in 2016. It's different for all the good reasons because this is world's first quad camera phone. It's time to put this phone to the test. This phone has more cameras in the back compared to any other phone out there on the market. More than the best of Samsung, which is the Galaxy Note 9. So I'm going to be putting this phone up against the Note 9, the best of Samsung. How capable are these cameras? Are they really just a gimmick? We're going to find that out in this video. So before we get into that, I'm going to share with you guys my experience with this phone. So first up, design and build quality wise, this is like a lighter version of the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. Like the whole construction is very similar to the Note 9. If you look towards the bottom, the positioning for the speaker, the mic hole, the Type-C port, the headphone jack, as well as the antenna lines are very similar. Instead of getting aluminum on the side, you have the glossy finish like the Galaxy S8 family with a beautiful gloss on the back. So it is really a premium phone indeed. We have a finger scanner on the back, which is incredibly fast. Four cameras on the side. It gives this phone a very unique look. Now the button placement on the Galaxy A9 2018 is way better than the Note 9 or any of their flagship phones because the big speed is on the left, but the power key has been moved towards the right. And with all this time that I was using this phone, not once did I hit the big speed key accidentally, which happens all the time on my Galaxy Note 9 because the wall rocker is all the way on the top and the big speed key is at the bottom, so it's kind of hard to reach towards the wall rocker. And I always end up pressing the big speed key, which is something that Samsung wants you to do. But with this phone, the big speed is on the left, whereas the power and volume rocker is on the right. It is very easier for my brain to understand the difference and hence I don't have to worry about the accidental touches. Other than that, the display on this phone is pretty good. It's a Super AMOLED display with 1080p HD resolution. It's obviously not as sharp as the Galaxy Note 9, but it is a pretty sharp phone. Now, software-wise, like every other Samsung phone, it has Android 8.1 Oreo. You get all the flagship features, uh, but more than the flagship features because this phone actually has a navigation gesture system implemented already. There's something that is coming with one UI. This is something that you won't find in the Galaxy Note 9 or the S9 Plus as of yet. But with this phone, we already have it. So Samsung has a really, really nice navigation system. So basically, the navbar keys are changed into gestures. So middle one is the home, this one is the multitasking tray, and this one is the back key. Honestly, guys, in my experience, that's been way better than the Google's navigation system. And despite being the world's first quad camera phone, this phone is actually coming with a Snapdragon 660 processor. And it's a decent chip. You can play games on this phone without any problem. It comes with 6 gigs of RAM, so you have enough memory for awesome multitasking. It's very easy on the battery life as well, but still, I would have preferred something like a Snapdragon 770 processor on this one because competition-wise, I mean, this phone is definitely behind with the internal stuff. But what about those cameras? We have the main 24 megapixel camera with f1.7 aperture. There's an 8 megapixel ultra-wide-angle lens, a 10 megapixel zoom lens, and also a 5 megapixel lens for that depth sensing. On paper, this phone it can clearly do things that no other Samsung phone can do, including the Note 9. But let's see if that that is really true or not. All right, so starting things off with a tree shot, uh, looking pretty good on the Galaxy A9, giving up nice with the sharpness, and uh, I took most of the pics in the scene optimizer mode, uh, which uses AI to enhance stuff, uh, and I think that really is a game changer for Samsung phones in the future. Without that mode, the pics weren't that good or comparable to the Galaxy Note 9, which by the way has the scene optimizer mode or AI on by default. Now in this shot, uh, the scene optimizer making things attractive on the A9, but it lacks the sharp message you can notice on the Note 9. A quick bright macro shot, uh, looking pretty sharp on both phones. Uh, where there's light, the A9 does good. Uh, an indoor light, we're coming, an indoor shot where the light is coming from the window, and uh, thanks to the scene optimizer, the A9 looks uh, very similar to the Note 9, uh, just not quite as sharp, but still it is doing pretty good. Outdoor shot where again uh, same things, it's uh, losing in the sharpness game and uh, switching to the wide angle lens 
it loses the sharpness even more. So you can only use the wide angle lens on this phone when there's enough light, otherwise it doesn't look that good. Kind of like this. Here the A9 does really good. I actually kind of like this on the A9 more uh, with the scene optimizer. It worked really well. And sitting the wide angle, you can see we have more in the scene, but it does suffer from less sharpness. Now a light focus comparison. I like that A9 don't zoom in with light focus. It's uh, doing pretty good here. You got the ability to set the blur afterward, which helps a lot. And here it's doing better than the Note if you look at the space. The Note 9 is kind of losing in that department. Also, portrait mode does work on objects, and here it's doing a very decent job. Another outdoor shot, obviously the dynamic range isn't as good as the flagship. A beautiful sky shot where it's uh, looking very good thanks to the scene optimizer, popping the colors more compared to the Note 9, which by the way has a little less aggressive scene optimizer. Now indoor is where you'll see major differences. You get sharper image on the flagship, that's where you get your money's worth. Here's an ultra low light shot, you can see uh, the difference. Again, in decent lighting, it does hold up. Some night shots where we can see the A9 suffer from a lot of grain. Don't even think about using the wide angle lens at night, because it feels like the picture is taken on a Galaxy S2. And always remember, a 24 megapixel selfie camera on a Samsung mid-range phone is not better than the 8 megapixel that is found on their flashy phone. And for the videos, it can shoot 4K, but it doesn't look detailed at all. You can't switch to the ultra wide angle mode while you are shooting the video. And uh, it is pretty shaky because there is no optical image stabilization. And considering at this price, I mean, it is pretty bad. Again, it suffers from loss of detail a lot. So overall, the Galaxy A9 Pro is more of a first phone. Like Samsung wanted to be the first to do the four cameras on the back. They wanted to jump on this bandwagon of having multiple cameras on the back. They've certainly done it. They are the first, but it's definitely not the best execution. And while I really like this phone, it's really hard for me to recommend this at the price where Samsung is selling. So it is about $600 which is a lot of money. I mean, you can get a used Galaxy S9 Plus at that price, and also some of the other newer phones in this price range are offering much, much more than what this phone is offering. So again, Samsung, uh, I have to say, this is a good phone, but a bad price. This one should get priced in between 400 to $450. I mean, at that price, it definitely does look a lot appealing, and it's gonna cause a lot of attention to the competitors. But sadly, this is a very expensive phone. Uh, I would definitely love to see what Samsung will do with their flagship triple camera setup that is coming with the Galaxy S10 Plus and quad camera setup that is coming with the Galaxy S10 Plus 5G version. So I'm interested and excited for that. Anyway guys, that was my full look of the Samsung Galaxy A9 2018. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will catch you guys in the next